What's up guys, this is Angel Lamette and I am hanging here with Sacred Heart. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? Knackered, but very well, thank you. Good. You just did a cracking set there. Really? Sure it was us? Yes. Oh, thank you very much then. <laughs> it's so funny, isn't wow. it? <laughs> Um, how, can I just ask you, how did the band form? Well, you can. Um, <laughs> do you know, we actually started a long, long time ago. Um, Mark and I were one of the three original members. We started with a guy called Mark Beebe on the drums, but um, we never really did anything, in all, in all honesty. We never bothered to venture further than the studio and rehearsal rooms and we recorded a few demos and we sort of built up a local following but I don't know we loved it but we weren't really really fussed about it mm -hmm. so we knocked it on the head because of university commitments and stuff like that Mark and I remained close friends Mark BB moved away to Glasgow and we're based just southwest of London so obviously We've kept in touch, but it's not quite the same. And then about 2003, Mark and I decided to start jamming again. And we was liking the new stuff. We liked the way the old stuff sounded. And we got Claudio in on the drums. Cool. Um, what inspired you to pick up an instrument or sing? Can I have individual answers, by the way? <laughs> well, um, I was forced into it by my parents. <laughs> That's nice. Classical guitar. Um, uh, soon bored me, and um, I think it was um, 1987 album White Snake. When I heard that, that was it. I was well into my rock, and, uh, and John Sykes, he just rips. Who? Yeah, because yeah, you don't like him at all, no. do you? He's, he's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, thank you. That's very nice. So, um, yeah, that's um, that's when I sort of took up the uh, the electric. Yeah. And uh, the rest is. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very short, a very short not history. Not interesting yeah. at all. History. What then? I know. I was thinking, where? So what's your story? Um, mine was very similar, to be honest. Um, from an early age, I was always in the school choir and stuff like that. You never told me that. Yeah, well, I, I knew you'd take the uh, yeah. the Mickey. You're right. Um, and uh, so I always enjoyed singing. Yeah. And at school, I was pretty much the class clown, and exactly the same as Mark. It was White Snakes, 1987, and Europe's the Final Countdown album that really got me into hard rock, mm. or pop rock, or soft metal, or cheesy metal, or cop rock, or whatever it's really referred to these days. And good stuff. it is good stuff. And um, my love for the genre progressed from those two albums and the want to take up an instrument and be more of a songwriter than actually a performer um, took over. Brilliant. What's been your best gig to date? Best gig? Yes. Today? Today, do you know what? Today was awesome. The crowd, you know, let's be honest, the majority are here for Blaze Bailey. And can't say I blame them, the guy has a huge history and he's very well known and it's his hometown. But the response was fantastic. Yeah. The cheers were awesome. We just sold a bucket load of CDs. And that's as flattering as it gets. Mm. You know, because whether we play in front of, I always say this, if we play in front of 25 people or 2,500 people, if we get the response that we're looking for, we've had the best time in the world. No matter how big or how small the crowd. And tonight they were awesome. Whether it's the best gig or not, I don't know. A lot have their merits. We played in front of two and a half, three thousand people supporting the choir boys a few years ago, which was class, but I wouldn't say we performed really well. Yet we played in front of about 150 people at the Camden Underworld supporting Europe's old guitarist, Kim Marcello, mm -hmm. and we kicked ass. Yeah. Um, you know, so they all have their merits, and tonight was awesome. Yeah. That's been yours, Mark. Yeah, well, I was going to say the Key Marcello gig, actually, because, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty packed, and um, we were all on it that night. It just went really well. And, um, we were on something. We were on something, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it just, it just went so well that night, and, and a blast. It's yeah. awesome, awesome night. So, yeah, I'll probably say that one. Uh, you've just recently played at the Camden uh, Rock Festival. Had the Cambridge. 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 Sorry, you said Camden, yeah, that's all it was. I'll just keep my mouth shut. It's going to be short. Short into me. <laughs> How did that go? It was all again. It was awesome. Um, we had originally been scheduled to play around the same time as Thunder, and I mean I'm a Thunder fan. Mark's a Thunder fan. In fact, we're all Thunder fans, and 
you know, we're not stupid. You're going to play against Thunder, you're going to lose. Because <laughs> they're an established band. And to be honest, we wanted to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we managed to talk the organiser, who was good as gold, into dropping it back an hour. And we ended up playing to, I think, what was the biggest headline slot of our stage for the weekend. Um, and again, like tonight, by no means packed, but absolutely awesome response. Yeah. We made some... I mean, we, we always refer to fans as friends. Yes. And we always ask people their name because we genuinely feel, as an unsigned nobody band, that those that look after us will look after them. Yeah. And exactly the same as tonight, we've just walked in there after taking all our crap down and they've come over and they said absolutely awesome great stuff brilliant and that's exactly what they did at the cambridge and that's all we can ask for mm. and we love it every time yeah sure and also you're playing at the z rock this year as well with the docking in wigan <laughs> <laughs> wigan of all places wigan is actually local to me so i'm obviously going to be coming well, i don't know but i've heard the top north and the wigan type of area they like their mushy peas they do indeed oh. and the pies as well oh well it's me too um, <laughs> yes, um, the Z-Rock one, I'm looking forward to. I've met Don Dockin a couple of times, actually. Wow. Um, I'm not name-dropping because I literally said, really? Don Dockin, you are absolutely superb, can I kiss your feet? <laughs> and he said, who the hell are you? Security, get this man away from me. <laughs> um, I, but I have met Don Dockin a couple of times, just, just as a fan at gigs. And to actually get to play on the same stage as Dokken, who, if you listen to the hard title track of the album Shake, yeah. it's Dokken influenced. Yeah. It doesn't stay Dokken influenced, it goes a bit bluey, bluesy on the chorus. But Dokken, it's going to be an absolute dream come true. Yes, definitely. Marshall um, Fusty likes y, uh, YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, as you said, your new album, uh, Shake, um, is self-finance. How do you go as a band, you know, because as you said before, you're quite unknown, if you will, but how do you go about promoting and marketing and stuff like that. See, I was going to say Mark answer this one, but he knows absolutely nothing about it. <laughs> Do you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a club DJ for a living, and I've done promotions and marketing work within the late night leisure industry. Yeah. And you can spend a fortune on stuff that doesn't work. You just have to be clever with your money, you know. And we haven't got a lot of money. Mark's got a couple of kiddies. He's got a mortgage to pay. Um, I've got a mortgage to pay. Claudio's got a mortgage to pay. You know, we don't have a great deal of disposable income. But we all believed in what we were doing. So with the small amount that we've had to push it with, we've just spent it wisely. And the internet these days is about as good a marketing tool as you can possibly get yeah. and through the likes of myspace and redirecting people to sacredheartband.com through reverb nation and uh, many other sites and itunes of course which is free to sign up to you know we, we've we've made a lot of friends and uh, so i put it to anyone who's deciding to do it on their own just be careful yeah. don't believe these companies that offer so, you know, yeah, yeah, thousands of radio stations promoting you for £200 a month. It's absolute BS. You know, you can get them on those radio stations yourself. Yeah. Granted, it's going to mean you're going to have to write the envelope and you're going to have to stick it in the post box and all that kind of stuff. That's all they do. Mm. And if they don't do that, they just send an MP3, yeah. which, again, you can do. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just common sense, just common sense. Yeah. Uh, you've had a lot of great reviews as well. Uh, would you, I mean, what was it like, you know, seeing your band and CD review or gig review in a, mag a national magazine? You know, is it weird? It's flattering, but it's hard coming up with a new name to write your own review every time. <laughs> Uh, no, obviously, it's extremely <laughs> flattering, and it's, it's awesome, because it is, it is the small equivalent of having your name up in lights, and, and I'm not talking crime watch, you know, you're talking, <laughs> you know, uh, being noticed, being talked about as a songwriter, because Mark is a musician, in, 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 and he'll admit this, I'm a songwriter, you know, I might sing, and I enjoy singing, and I might not be the worst singer in the world, but I'm certainly not the best. And ultimately, I'm a songwriter, so when people turn around and say something that I've worked on, I've put